it's a, it's a uh, you know, it's not to be taken lightly, and we're entrusted with uh, the public airwaves. So, you know, it's yeah. it's our, and I don't know if that's continuing to be held in such high esteem anymore. <clears throat> so, okay. first, what you do in an interview. Could I have your name and spelling, your title, and where you're from, please? That is for the lower thirds, the correct spelling. My name is John Truitt, T-R-U-I-T-T. -T. I'm an instructor here at the Colorado Media School. I'm from Chicago. Okay, great. So, um, as, I must Sorry. ask, um, as a uh, instructor, um, in the broadcaster, and mm -hmm. radio, um, how uh, did you uh, find a passion to uh, pursue uh, such a vocation? Well, um, I started out as a reporter, and what I do as a, as a news photographer, as a camera person, is no different. I just carry a camera and not a notebook. We are gathering information. We're gathering data. We're de gathering facts. And our job as journalists and electronic journalists, our job is to interpret things in the world. If it's technology, if it's politics, if it's education, if it's medical like coronavirus now, our job is to interpret those things and make them easily understood, easily digested, and more or less comfortable for the general public uh, to, to digest. Yeah. Um, in working um, in this field, when it comes to communication, um, what are your strategies or conveying your message uh, clearly? Well, that's a good question because the most important thing is the message. The most important thing is the story. It's not the reporter. It's not the lighting. It's not the microphone. All those other things are used to convey the message, to convey the story. Our job is to convey that, to uh, put that out to the public, to bring that story, that data, that information to the public, to the people that are viewing with the least amount of distractions. Sometimes uh, we'll be in a situation where we're doing an interview with a politician on the steps of the Capitol and a plane will fly by or an or a ambulance will drive by. However, we have uh, very limited time with that individual, so we're going to have to make the most of it. Other times we have all the time in the world, we have the ability to control our environment and control the situation. And in those instances, we would minimize the distractions down to the very, very bare minimum. Sometimes when we're, uh, when we're at the, the um, let me say that again. Um, sometimes when we're at the mercy of someone else's schedule, we don't have that luxury. We don't have the ability to control the environment, to control the situation as much as we wanted to. But our job as a storyteller, as a information, um, our job as an information deliverer, our job as a storyteller is to convey that story, that information, that data to the public in the most uh, uh, direct way with the least amount of distractions. If we're very lucky, we can make it look flattering. We can make it look interesting to see. We can, we can take a story and we can make it visually interesting as well as using uh, language and vocabulary that also makes it interesting. Um, and those are, those are things that really depend on the story. If you're doing a story about coronavirus, I don't want to see a bunch of fancy, beautiful tricks and fancy lighting and fancy editing. I want, that's a very serious subject and doesn't, it doesn't dictate any form of trickery or fancy gadgets or anything like that. That message has to be conveyed with the least amount of distractions. If you're doing a story about this coming weekend, the Frozen Dead Guy Festival in Netherlands is coming up. 
that's a fun story. You can, you can play with that. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with that. You can make really interesting edits and interesting video, and you can have plays on words and use your vocabulary. Um, that, that's a feature story, and that, that really lends itself to being more creative. Hard news stories, coronavirus, shootings, the election for the most part, those are hard news stories, and they don't really lend themselves well to any frills. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. How did you, when working in Chicago um, in this area of work, how did you, um, what was your strategy on uh, working to uh, tell the story of what's going on in the community, but such tragic things taking place in Chicago, um, but being conscious of what you put on the air and what you did film without uh, disrespecting families or, yeah. or the community as a uh, reporter uh, out there. Yeah, that, uh, that's a big hot button issue with me. Uh, sensitivity, ethics, uh, a sense of decorum, respect, all those things are, are absolutely necessary whenever you're covering stories that affect the community. Homicides, fires, poverty, homelessness, um, you know, addiction, um, all those things affect the community. And they should be, they should not be ignored, but they shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't be reported on unless you have your facts and you have all the figures and all the information necessary to tell an accurate story. When it comes to people um, reporting gang violence shootings um, in Chicago, we had more murders than LA and New York combined for the last three years. So when you're covering situations like that, you need to have a great deal of respect and uh, reverence, and you have to know how to talk to people. Um, sometimes the best way to report a story is to do nothing and not report it that immediately at that moment. Sometimes the best reporting is reporting that's done after we've gained all the information, got all the facts together, all the people, and we were able to put forth a, a really accurate picture of what goes on. Far too often, in television news, uh, competition drives the, uh, the deadlines and it drives the story. Uh, more so than true journalistic integrity, the dollar and competition with the other news agencies also is a huge driving force. And I think it's the journalist's job to ignore as much as you can without getting fired. Uh, our job is to ignore the, the business end of it, ignore the competition, ignore all the noise that, that, is, that is the monetization of news. So I think it's our job to be storytellers, to be journalists, and to never lose sight of the fact that what we're doing is incredibly important and carries with it a lot of responsibility. Yeah, that's understood. So how do we, uh, what's your opinion when it comes to how do we use the media uh, as a positive outlet um, in the community and, and work to uh, convey the message to those who may be critics against those in the media that we're yeah. part of the problem, not right. the solution? Um, and I, even though I've been doing this my entire life, I tend to agree with a lot of the uh, critics of news these days because news makes money and we are exploiting the tragedy and the misery of people who are victims of crime, victims of violence, victims of, of the economy. We are exploiting them. The news is making money off of the tragedy of others. And that is inherently wrong. That, that should not be the case. Um, violence and uh, gun violence and, and shootings and gang violence and whatnot, those have a place in the news, but they should not be the only thing that you cover. 
Um, I think a lot of news organizations do that out of being lazy. It's very easy to cover a shooting. It's very easy to cover a 10 alarm fire. It speaks for itself. However, far too few news organizations go deeper and try to figure out why, how to stop it, how to, uh, how to uh, tell the story a little bit more accurately and with a little bit more humanity. Um, those are the things that a true journalist will embrace and hopefully figure out how to do. But until people take journalism as a calling and, and treat it with the reverence and, and respect that it deserves, people are going to get by with a bare minimum. And people are going to continue to exploit violence and continue to exploit the misery that, that we see on the news. There's no reason the news should be primarily negative stories. Yeah. And I think until the, the news organizations stop looking at payroll, stop looking at deadlines, stop looking at competition, stop looking at story count, getting it on first, regardless of whether or not it's accurate. As soon as we start to understand that we're doing a disservice to the people, that's going to continue. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's getting worse. Yeah. Because now we're not only competing with ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, now there's all the bloggers. Now there's YouTube channels. Now there are, um, you know, internet only uh, website news that's driving the competition. So um, competition, one would think, would make it more responsible, but competition in reality is making us less responsible. Yeah, that's understandable. Uh, do you uh, believe that when it comes to uh, the media arts, um, that we should work harder to convey uh, and explain when it comes to those who desire or have a desire to move forward um, with pursuing a career in the media, that this should be looked at as an art form. Oh, yeah. Is, is I mean, storytelling is an art. Yeah. Photography can be an art. Uh, it should be. Um, writing a script should be an art. There, are, How many words are there in the English language? How we put the words together is the same way a painter puts together colors on a palette, on a, on a canvas from a palette. How you, we all start out with the same colors. We all start out with the same words. But how we arrange them and how we put them together and use them for emphasis on this or that or, or you know, using them and not using them, that is as artistic as choosing the right colors to paint a landscape. So yeah, it, it is an art form. And as long as it is being treated as a fast food commodity where uh, journalists are expected to go to a story, churn out a bunch of script, churn out a bunch of information real fast, and put it on the air immediately, well, it's going to be fast food as opposed to something that takes time and uses proper ingredients to come up with something worthwhile. So yeah, I think it's up to the individuals, but more so it's up to management because if management comes to you and says, I want you to um, go to this crime scene and I want you to have a script for me and a package and a news story uh, in the next half hour, well, you might get very lucky and get all your elements in a half hour, but probably not. More than likely, you're going to have to make concessions here and there just to get it on the air. So uh, I think that we suffer greatly when we um, choose expediency, convenience, speed, deadlines over accuracy and reality and responsible journalism journalism with with respect so uh, it shouldn't we shouldn't have to choose between those two but we unfortunately do yeah that's understandable 
when it comes to reaching uh, the at-risk youth in Denver, um, vice versa, is there? Do you think that there's anything, any strategies that we can implement that uh, were used in Chicago, uh, urban cities um, in Denver, or if there's any strategies that are being used in Denver that we need to implement in Chicago that are not being used? I think if young people understand journalism, I think if they understand storytelling, and I, th I think if they understand how their world is portrayed in the media, how their world should be portrayed in the media, and how their world can be portrayed by them, I think that a population of young people that just accepts what's handed to them on the TV or on the internet, if they just accept what is basically regurgitated out of the big news machines, and if they accept it, and if, they, if they're content with that, that's a, that's a shame. I think the main reason that journalism should affect the youth is that they should see it as something that they are inheriting and it's something that they should treat with respect and they can change it. They can change the way the world looks at itself and that's done through media and that's done through quality journalism. So I think if, if young people understand the process, understand the potential of what journalism could be and how journalism today falls short of that, I think that they can really, really make a difference if, if they demand better.